Hi everyone and welcome to Wi-Fi Sheep. This is the second part of your June 2019 update. How you doing? My name is Tom. Thanks for joining us here on Wi-Fi Sheep. And again, a warm welcome to all our recent subscribers. Uh, this is the June update video. I'm just trying to explain a little bit about what's been going on um, in the past month and what we're planning on doing on the channel. In the past 24 hours, quite a lot of tech news has dropped. So I'm going to just take a bit of time out to talk about that because some of it actually affects what we do here on the channel. And I feel is actually relevant and I've got something I want to kind of discuss and talk about and say about the products. The first bit of news which happened today was that the C64, the full version of the uh, reboot of the Commodore 64 machine, uh, the news dropped and we had a, a price and a retail date. I've already done the video on that. Now, there was initially a lot of excitement, as you can expect. Every time a new Pi board happens, people get excited. What's nice about the Pi Foundation is that when they announce something, it's generally a product that's actually on sale. You can buy it the day they announce it. And that's what happened with the Pi 4. Um, now, I basically I was busy yesterday, so I took a step back. I haven't sort of um, done anything because I wanted time just to think about it, and I certainly haven't ordered one yet. The problem is that um, unlike many other YouTubers I've watched who jumped on it yesterday and were saying, this is amazing, this is fantastic, I've ordered five now kind of thing, a lot of them were talking about the idea they want it for games. And yes, the Pi 4 is going to be fantastic for games. But there's some features about the board that I'm not sure about. And to be honest with you, in this video, and I'm going to be a bit controversial here, I'm sitting on the fence. There's a few things I'm not happy with. Before I go any further, let me just clarify that I'm not taking a dig at the Raspberry Pi Foundation. The Raspberry Pi as a product since its conception in 2011 has been amazing. It has been for me a complete life changer almost in what I'm now doing that I couldn't do previously. Um, so, you know, it's been fantastic and I'm a huge supporter of the Raspberry Pi Foundation and the project. Now, where I'm taking a bit of issue here is the ethos with the board. First of all, let's just have a look at the specs of the new Pi 4. Again, I've got my iPad here, so I'm just going to literally run through in real time the website with you. Okay, so Raspberry Pi 4, I'm just looking at it here on the official RaspberryPi.org website. Faster, more powerful, yes, that's the boast it's always made. So we now have a new multi-core process, new 64-bit ARM processor, that's the beginning of my problems. Uh, a choice of 1, 2 and 4 gigabytes of RAM. Mm. Uh, the gigabit Ethernet is obviously welcomed. Uh, USB 3 now makes an appearance on the board for the first time as alongside uh, a traditional USB 2 stack. Micro HDMI ports, multiple HDMI video ports now supporting 4K displays. Again, uh, I'm going to get onto that in a minute. The USB-C power supply, they've now changed the form factor for the power supply. Yeah, again, I have a bit of a, yeah, I have some issues here. Um, they're also pushing the unit now as the your new desktop computer. They're now saying this is a replacement for a PC. Let me just start with what I've got problems here. There's, there's a few things going on here that I am just yeah, not happy with. Right. The original conception of the Raspberry Pi when it came out was to create a cheap device. Basically, it was to rebuild the BBC Micro. It was to create an affordable, accessible computing board, primarily for children, school kids, that could go away, learn how the computer worked, and create new things by coding and creating. So we're talking games, apps. We're going to create a next generation of programmers. That was the whole point of the project. And that's what Raspberry Pi 1, the original boards, did. Now, obviously, things improve. Technology improves. Stuff gets cheaper. I get that. We had that when the Raspberry Pi 2 came along. It in incorporated the new 32-bit quad-core processor for the first time. We actually got a gig of RAM as opposed to the 512 megabytes or 128 megabytes we had previously. And it was welcome, especially with the fact that the Linux operating system that the Raspberry Pi Foundation went with as standard was blooming slow. The original Pis really struggled to run that OS, especially in desktop mode. You know, you, you click a fold, you've got to wait a few seconds for it to load. You drag a window across the screen. It, it was horrid, quite frankly. Um, but 
as things have gotten on, we've had faster models, faster models, and every time now there's a new pie, we're kind of told, oh, race out, got to buy, got to buy 10 of those, and you've got to have the latest, greatest, bestest thing. The problem I've got is I feel that the project may have slightly lost sight of what it was originally trying to do. A few months ago, BBC News here in the UK had a few articles about how computer science in schools, bearing in mind computer IT, got taken away and it was computer science that's replaced, the uptake of the GCSE sort of final exam was dropping and schools didn't want to support the IT curriculum anymore, they didn't want to do computer science anymore. Originally the Raspberry Pi was created because during the 90s particularly we had Microsoft and Apple that took the idea of the open platform basic programmable computer and they changed it into this lockdown platform where they said don't worry about how to operate, don't worry about command prompts, don't worry about computer program languages. Here, here's Microsoft Office or Apple Works. You can just click and point and drag a few things around. We'll do all the rest. And it created a lock system. So no one was learning throughout the 90s or the first decade of 2000s how to code or program anything. So the Pi came along and said, here's an open, cheap source platform. Learn how the computer works once again. It was fantastic. We're now getting into a stage, especially with Pi 4, where it's, here's the desktop computer. It can now do all the things that Windows can do. Here's Office, or in that case, LibreOffice, an open source suite of software. Don't worry about programming it. Don't worry about how Linux works. It'll now stream, net. you can watch Netflix, you can stream Google Stadia probably on it, and all you can play with your video games. Great, but I think at this point, we've kind of lost what we're gonna do with a machine of that power. Um, I'm going to sound slightly hypocritical here because obviously I can see some applications where this would be extremely useful. It sounds to me that this has been done by the Raspberry Pi's commercial arm, their commercial division, because they've got clients who want to use these in call centres as terminals, from the sounds of it, with twin screens set up. And they've just managed to get the price of some features down. They've shoved it on the board and gone, there you go. Please don't discount what I'm saying, it is an impressive piece of work and an impressive piece of engineering and the fact they've got the price point so perfect, it's still around that $35 mark, is a real achievement. I'm just questioning for its core value, who's actually going to need this, really? I mean, all the YouTubers I've seen, all they've said, it's RetroPie, it's gaming, it's emulating and that's what they want to do with it. The last Pi board that really excited me, and it was the end of Christmas 2015, was when Magpie Magazine put on the front cover, and here's a sealed one, the Pi Zero, the Raspberry Pi Zero, which cost about $4, £4, $4 uh, in the UK and in the US. Now, for me, that board, that was exciting. The idea of you could create a low-cost computer that actually worked, it booted up, you could run Linux, you could have your operating system, you have your click and your mouse, and you could even go online. They, released the Pi Zero, Zero W a few years later, which had a Wi-Fi connection. It was just under about £10. It was super cheap, but you could do a lot with what was on the spec. It was a single core Broadcom ARM processor, had 512 megabytes of RAM. It ran at um, one gigahertz, that was a thousand megahertz. It was impressive and it was exciting because suddenly there was this little disposable computer board that you could do so much with, but it had limitations that meant you could be creative in writing raw code in either Python or my preference to write in BBC Basic against this and you could do things with it which was fantastic but it wasn't a replacement and it never boasted to be a replacement for your desktop PC. Uh, the, the issue I've got is obviously the, the operating system. The Raspbian Pixel it started off as a bare minimum GUI desktop with some tools for writing Python. Python was the language they chose. I don't agree it was the best language to use, but we're not going to get in there today. You could write code, it had Pygame written into it, so you could actually create visual things on screen. And it also gave you an introduction to how Linux works, so you actually had to tap the command prompt. Over time, I've seen this OS develop and develop and develop and going more the way of Windows and Mac OS, where it's locking you out of the terminals. Yes, you can still get to them, but now it's, oh, don't worry about that. Just double click here and here's Office and you don't have to code a blooming thing if you don't want to. It's just, yeah. And then also we get on to the fact of this mini HDMI out on a main board now, twin mini HDMI out. I get they had to do it to get twin output. Do we need twin output? 
I, I, I don't see myself using twin output on a Raspberry Pi at the moment. I mean, I might just be completely blind and, and wrong about that, but it feels like that's been done. They've got a commercial client that they're going to sell a million of these units to, hence why it's happened. So they've done that. 4K output, really? Do we need that? We, uh, do we need that? I, I, uh, HDMI, I guess I could understand because that if you're going to plug it into a modern TV, 1080, 720p, H, HDMI is the, is the modern standard. The Pi still has the um, audio video jack for um, 576i uh, composite out on it as well, which is kind of more common to the sort of thing I was expecting the original Pi's to, to use. Um, so that's a pain, unless you've now got to buy adapters to be able to adapt it up to a modern HDMI standard. They've also changed the power supply, so we now switch to USB-C from micro USB. And then we actually get onto the Broadcom processor itself, so it's a new quad-core uh, ARM processor. What annoys me about this is that when the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus came out, which was the final, they did the A plus and the B plus models. I reviewed the A plus, which I thought was a fantastic machine to have an A plus form factor board with the modern power of the then Raspberry Pi on, which I, you know was great, and it still had the same connectors and form factors. Uh, the problem I've got now is that this new processor, they said at the time that that was the end of the line of the ARM architecture Broadcom chips and that they were going to be moving over possibly to RISC-V architecture for the next generation of 64-bit Raspberry Pi boards. Fine, if we're going to sort of cut off there and we're going to jump to a new architecture so we can sort of progress forwards, I'm fine with that. And then they come out with the Pi 4 and it's basically an upgrade of the same architecture as all the other Pis which is sort of good and bad because they've said on one hand, oh wait, that's it, that's the end of the line. Well, clearly it's not. But at the same time, it's well, if we're not moving on, and I, I just get the feeling that basically they've had a lot of commercial pressure from maybe the education suppliers or the big pie uh, peripheral companies that have said, oh no, you're not changing the architecture because none of our software is gonna work, the OS wouldn't work, you need everything we need recompiling, and you'll also split your market clean down the middle between those on the older Broadcom ARM architecture and those on the new RISC-V architecture or RISC-V architecture. So I'm a bit disappointed that it basically seems to be more of the same. Um, don't get me wrong, it's probably a fantastic board. These features are gonna be very, very useful. I'm gonna wait. In all honesty, that's my honest opinion on this board. I'm not going to run out and buy one tomorrow. I will need to buy one because obviously I produce products that will now need to fit this new board. They've changed the form factor a little bit. Connectors are in different places. So it's unlikely, although I haven't checked it, it's unlikely that the Pi 4 is actually going to fit a Pi 3 2 or 1 case. So that's also a little bit annoying. Um, I will get one, obviously, because I'm a big fan of the Pi. What I'm going to do with one, I honestly don't know. Operating systems like RISC-OS, for example, aren't going to support it at the moment. Uh, RISC-OS can't even make use of a quad-core 32-bit chip, so what the hell is it going to do with a quad-core 64-bit? God knows. Um, none of the software actually runs in 64-bit mode, by the way. It's all 32-bit, so we've got these 64-bit chips, but you can't do anything 64-bit uh, with them. The OS is 32-bit. All the software for the Pi, even the official stuff, is all 32-bit. Um, I think an opportunity got missed to jump architectures here and start us running on 64-bit operations so I'm really torn I'm just going to sit on the fence don't get me wrong I think it's a fantastic product and it was naturally going to happen but I just worry about what we're leaving behind and the older lesser boards are still capable of doing so much and I'm just worried that we're losing the education aspect of the whole pie project there's probably a million other points I could make on this, but I think I've fundamentally got across what I wanted. What I'd really, really love to see would be a slightly upgraded Pi Zero. I'd like the Pi Zero to be more accessible, so we're not limited to one or two every time we try and buy them. I'd like to be able to buy them in bulk if I wanted them. Uh, I'd also maybe like to see the Pi 2, or what well, would actually be the Pi 3 quad-core 32-bit chip come over to the Zero. So if we can have a slightly upgraded Zero with perhaps a gig of RAM on board, but for the same price point, or the existing Zero, but let's get a pound off it, so it's three pounds a board. That would be fantastic. Uh, I would generally be excited about that more than I would about the Pi 4 coming out. Anyway, sorry to sit on the fence and be controversial. 
What do you think? Do you think there's any merit in what I'm saying or am I just kind of not with it today? Anyway, <laughs> drop me a line in the comments, tell me what you think. And as ever, thank you so much for joining me here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you real soon right here on the channel. Until next time, bye for now. Thank you.